Hi there, in this video I'm going to be discussing uh, a quick little experiment that can be conducted fairly easily. Um, I'm just going to explain some of the concept with the, the touch screen and then I'll do a, a quick little video and I'll hopefully be able to explain it during that as well. So anyway, um, the best way to approach this in developing an experiment for moment of inertia I would say is to set up two blocks at a some sort of slope. So let's say you have the here, we'll just rock this angle as 14 degrees. And uh, that's just because I had a piece of wood in my garage that has 14 degrees. We're going to be rolling down a dowel that is, I believe it's one point one centimeters in diameter and I'm just trying to keep everything in centimeters so we don't have to worry about units from start to finish I believe that that distance itself was 17 centimeters so just so you guys know So when you watch the video, you can kind of understand what's going on, and if you feel like it, you can go back and work out the math. Um, you, you only be able to use variables because I don't know the weight um, of some, I don't know, like the mass of the dowels or the CDs or anything along those lines. So um, some of the assumptions that we make right off the bat is that V naught is equal to zero. And we know that there's not going to be, there's no slipping occurring. Although if the inertia gets really high, you would have to be concerned with that. Um, so we know that there's only rolling. Okay. So the first thing to do is consolidate, or at least the first thing I would do is I would consolidate this dowel into a single point. And if we were to adapt our coordinate system to fit this slope appropriately, you would have something along these lines, this being x, that being y, our weight would be directed downward towards the earth, our weight will have two com or I mean our normal force would be perpendicular to the surface and our weight will have two different components, one which I'm going to call w y, which is the y component, and then wx. Okay. Well, we can, we know that there's not any motion happening in the y direction. So, and there's no friction, so there's no real reason for us to solve for the y. Um, coordinate, but we can use this as a simple way to kind of cancel out unneeded stuff. And uh, basically what we end up is that we know that Wx is the force that's contributing into the motion. Perfect. So what does this look like? Um, to a ball because right now we're just doing a, a point or a particle analysis so what does this look like if if we consider it a ball like it really is well let's just draw our ball and you have a single point now whenever you look at particle analysis you always think of the the ball or the box or whatever it is to be a single point well where you actually are meant to apply that point is the centroid. So assuming that we kind of adjust our plane of view 
to be xy then you could say that this is the direction that wx will be. Well that makes sense but uh, we know that there is some sort of ground along the bottom here so what does that mean in terms of uh, uh, an opposing force? Well, you, you will have, since there's no slipping, you will have what I would call a friction force. Now, mind you that there is no slipping, so the only thing, the only thing that we can really gather from this is that Wx must equal the force of friction. But that doesn't mean that the object stops moving. That just means that you get this spinning action right here. You get this spinning action, which is what we associate to um, when something's rolling on the ground. So in actuality, what you have is static friction. And as you know, static friction is higher. And that's why they tend to enjoy that additional friction when you're talking about tires on, on vehicles and such. So just to kind of give us a, a basis or a, of this concept, I'm, I'm going to zoom out real quick um, and let's just look at a single wheel. And this is going to give you a little bit of background into why why things um, are the way they are. Why, why inertia makes such a difference. What if we were to split this circle up into little slips? Okay, and rather than drawing them all out, I'm just going to say let's let's come over here and I'll zoom in. And we can draw one. Let's say this is this right here is our centroid, okay? Centroid of that circle. And you have this little tiny slip that comes out all the way to the edge of the of the the dowel, okay? Well we know that the centroid is going to be at this orange spot. It's going to be somewhere in here, okay? Where's our force, our friction force, uh, or our weight force? Where's that weight force being applied? Well weight force is being applied at the centroid and has no effect on how the object rolls other than causing the resultant force of the friction. What I want you to look at is notice the amount of torque that this the amount of torque or amount of moment that can occur because the distance between the friction force and the center is large. So let's just say that's large for now. Okay? Look at the distance between here and the centroid. That's the, that's like the cent uh, the, the 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 distance of the center to the ro the axes of rotation. It, it's much it's less than where the force is actually being applied. So in a sense, the this is this is saying that you have less you have more torque being caused because of the distance relative to the the centroidal distance. The fact that the force is further away from the, the axis of rotation, it gives you more torque and thus making rotation easier to start up. Let's give you the converse situation here. The converse situation would be You have a spot, you have your long slivers, here's the dowel, and here's the end of the CD. Okay? Now, combined, while you may have uh, some centroid in here, in, in this spot, because of the dowel, but if we were to combine this whole slip into one object, you would find that this, that the, the, the centroid or the mass, the center of mass, is going to move outwards towards maybe out here. Because there's more mass further out from the axis of rotation. However, 
where the friction force is being applied is still at the end of the dowel and you realize that this distance is much shorter than this distance out here. So that's just to give you kind of an idea. Basically it, it's it's a feeling of how easy is it going to rotate and you could even think about pushing at different points on a door to figure out where uh, inertia is going to take the largest effect. Um, you can hang things at the end of the door or and, and it will be harder to push because there's more inertia on there. So anyway, um, I also have some uh, video clips and I hope you guys enjoy it. Leave any comments and requests if you'd like. Have a good day.